Continuing on with carbohydrate regulation, we are now going to discuss low blood glucose in both the liver and the muscle. For the liver, we're going to have it written in black, and for the muscle, we're going to have it written in red. There are only a few minor details and differences between the two, and we'll discuss those. So when you have low blood glucose, your hormone is going to be glucagon in the liver. Glucagon is going to bind to its GPCR, which is a G-protein coupled receptor. The GPCR is then going to activate CAMP, which is then going to activate PKA, which is protein kinase A. So kinase, this is going to be phosphorylating things. So first we're going to discuss again glycogen storage and glycogen breakdown. So we're going to begin with glycogen storage. So if we have low blood glucose, do we want to build glycogen and store it? No, we're already low on blood glucose. We need all the glucose we, we have, so we're going to inactivate this glycogen. Um, my apologies, glycogen synthase. So we're going to inactivate glycogen synthase, which is going to inhibit glycogen storage. So if you inactivate glycogen synthase, you are going to put it in the B form. So I'm just going to abbreviate that to glycogen synthase B. And this is going to inhibit glycogen storage. Okay, now we are going to go to glycogen breakdown. So if we have low blood glucose, it would be really beneficial if we could break down our glycogen stores and get glucose from those glycogen stores. So we want to activate gly glycogen phosphorylase, which is then going to induce glycogen breakdown. So we're activating glycogen phosphorylase. Again, I'm going to abbreviate it, so it's going to put it in the glycogen phosphorylase A form, A for active, and this is going to increase glycogen breakdown. Now we're going to move on to our bifunctional enzyme. And we remember that our bifunctional enzyme is only in the liver. This is not present in the muscle cell. So we have PFK2, remember 2 for bifunctional enzyme, and FBPase2. So if, you, if we have low blood glucose, we do not want glycolysis to occur. We don't want to break down the only glucose we have. Instead, we want to promote gluconeogenesis, which is the making of glucose. When we want gluconeogenesis, we are going to activate FBPase, which is going to decrease the concentration of fructose 2,6-biphosphate. We remember fructose 2,6-biphosphate is an activator of PFK1, which would then go ahead and activate the whole glycolysis route. So if we decrease fructose 2,6-biphosphate, we are also going to inhibit PFK1. And thereby decrease glycolysis. Okay. Um, furthermore, one last thing to add, this is also going to activate 
gluconeogenesis. Okay, now there's one last thing that this pKa is going to affect for the liver cells, and that is protein kinase. Um, pyruvate kinase. Now if we have low blood glucose and we don't want glycolysis to occur because of that reason, then we want to inactivate pyruvate kinase because an active pyruvate kinase is going to continue glycolysis and activate it. So we want to inactivate pyruvate kinase by phosphorylating it by this kinase activity and that is going to decrease glycolysis. Okay, so that is everything for the liver cells. Now we are going to go on to muscles. There are only a few key differences. Um, your muscle cells do not have a glucagon receptor. So instead, we're going to use the hormone epinephrine. Epinephrine is going to bind to a beta adrenergic receptor. Adren and this is also a GPCR a G protein coupled receptor. And so from there, we're going to have the same route. We are going to activate this CAMP molecule, which is going to activate PKA. Um, the muscle cell is also going to have an effect on glycogen storage and breakdown because your muscles have glycogen stores in them in case you need a lot of energy for physical activity. So again, it's going to inactivate glycogen synthase and it's going to activate glycogen phosphorylase. Now, over here, the bifunctional enzyme, we talked about this is only in the liver, so the muscle cell is going to have nothing to do with this bifunctional enzyme. It also doesn't have a, an effect on the pyruvate kinase. These are both just going to be during the liver cell. So, a couple other little things. So, this glycogen phosphorylase A um, which is going to break down glycogen, also can be activated by two other things in the muscle cells. So if you have a high concentration of AMP or um, high concentrations of calcium. So either way, if you have AMP that sign signifies low energy, so you're going to want to break down your glycogen stores to get glucose to go through glycolysis and then eventually get energy. So if you have AMP that's low energy, you want to break down glycogen. Also when you have calcium, that signals that your muscles are contracting. When your muscles are contracting, you need energy. So again, you're going to, win a, you're going to want to break down your glycogen stores um, and that's why these two activate um, glycogen phosphorylase A. Also, like we discussed in the section going over high blood glucose levels, we discussed that ATP is going to inhibit phosphofructokinase 1. So if ATP inhibits phosphofructokinase 1, that means that AMP and ADP oops, are going to activate phosphofructokinase 1. So AMP and ADP, again, both signal, signal low energy, so you're going to want to activate glycolysis. So there you're going to activate PFK1, which is going to increase glycolysis. And that is all for low blood glucose levels in your liver and muscles.
the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.